the 29th of January 2024, is the date that has been set for Nafiz Madak to go to trial. The trial is expected to take at least three years, and will have over 300 witnesses who will be called to testify. Madak has been sitting in jail for over two years. He was arrested in April 2021, during a police chase in the city of Cape Town. He claims to be a self-employed businessman, who sells cars, property, and has a private security company. However an indictment containing 3,000 charges, depicts him as the leader of a lucrative criminal organization, known as the Madak Enterprise. He was on the record for some cases which I was uh, charged for on the regional court worship. Not all the charges. So he obviously withdrew on the regional court charges. Not on this case. No, he's not on the record for this case. So now Mr. the new lawyer, Mr. Van der Merlo, he will come on the record for all these charges. Murder, attempted murder, conspiracy to commit murder, extortion, abduction, money laundering, fraud, racketeering, are among the charges that he, along with his 13 friends, are facing. Madak's 13 co-accused in the indictment is a former rugby player, a former police sergeant, two of his family members, and also nine gang members. Okay, so Shalkin here was assassinated outside East Bishop Laver's home on the 18th of September 2020. Soon after his um, death, after his murder, um, so there was one person who was arrested and that was a former rugby player called Zane Killian. Zane Killian was then um, arraigned and he appeared in the Cape Town Magistrates Court. And um, months later, more people joined him, including um, Nafiz Modak, who is an alleged um, gang boss in the Western Cape. Now, since that time, the number of accused has now um, risen to 15 members. So there are now 15 members um, standing accused of being involved in the murder of um, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Kinnear. Zee Pool, a member of the Terrible West Side Gang, is alleged to be Madak's right-hand man. It is said that he had been under Madak's peril since the 1st of May 2019. His job was to allegedly find hitmen and orchestrate hits. According to the police, Zee Pool arranged several hits on Madak's instructions. Some of the names who were allegedly on Madak's hit list include Andre Nod, a club bouncer who survived a shooting at his residence on the 6th of September 2019. Richard Joseph, a tow truck driver who was shot and killed execution style, on the 20th of September 2019. And also William Booth, a Cape Town criminal lawyer who survived a shooting in his home, in April 2020. The state alleges that these crimes were premeditated, and that Zee Pool had paid the hitmen. Amal Janjis, and Janik Adonis, two members of the Junky Funky Street Gang, are labeled as key role players within the Madak Enterprise. It's alleged that the couple from the Cape Flats was behind at least five attempts to murder Detective Charles Kinnear between 2019 and 2020. On the 22nd of November 2019, Janik Adonis, whilst locked up in prison, contacted a hitman to murder Detective Charles Kinnear at his home in Bishop Lavis. Adonis told the hitman that his girlfriend, Amal Janchis, would contact him to confirm the details of the plan to kill Kinnear. On the following day, Amal Janjis called the hitmen, and they arranged to meet at an intersection, near the Mainenburg police station. Janjis arrived driving a white BMW. At the meeting point, the hitman got into the back of the BMW, and they drove to Detective Kinnear's home. Amal Janjis showed the hitman where Detective Kinnear's house is located. She also showed the hitman a part of the house, where he was supposed to throw a hand grenade. The hitman confirmed in court, that Amal Janjis gave him a Mills 36 hand grenade. She then instructed him to throw the hand grenade at Kinnear's front yard. The hitman then got out of the car and began walking towards Detective Kinnear's house. Before reaching the house however, he was approached and confronted by police officers who were there to guard and protect Detective Kinnear and his family. During the hitman's discourse with police, the Mills 36 grenade that he was carrying fell out of his pocket. The police would then arrest and charge him. For his part in the attempted murder, the hitman was only sentenced to 15 years in prison. It's also alleged that Madak gave Amal Janjis two brand new BMW cars, and also 7,000 rands, to purchase two cell phones. Amal Janjis was also given another 12,000 rands, by Nafiz Madak. She used the 12,000 rands to bribe, and corrupt an anti-gang unit sergeant, named Ashley Tabisher, on Madak's behalf. 
Ashley Tabisher allegedly gave Amal Janchi's information about possible searches and raids that the South African Police Service planned to carry out on Madak's residence. Following his arrest in May 2022, Tabisher was suspended from the police force due to his role in the plot to kill Detective Kinnear. Zane Killian, the former Griquas rugby player, is Nafiz Madak's business partner. Killian is alleged to have tracked Kinnear's location for over a period of six months. He tracked Kinnear's work cell phone more than 2,000 times, up until just minutes before Kinnear was assassinated. Zane Killian not only tracked the activities of Detective Charles Kinnear, but also those of high-ranking Western Cape police officers and members of the Western Cape Anti-Gang Unit. I've been in custody two years, almost eight months, so I've been to court more than 50 times. So you can imagine yourself financially, it's a burden. Zane Killian's pursuit of Charles Kinnear began on March 3, 2020, when he tracked and located the detective's police-issued cell phone. He also followed Kinnear on many trips to Johannesburg, where Kinnear was involved in a huge fraud investigation. A fraud investigation that ended in the arrest of several underworld figures and high-ranking police officers. On the day of Detective Kinnear's assassination, Killian first tracked Kinnear at 2.32 a.m. in the morning, which placed him at the detective's home. He would go on to track the detective 38 times on that day, following him from his office to a meeting he had in central Cape Town. Kinnear was tracked using three different smartphones until the day he was murdered. Nafiz Madak is accused of paying Killian over 100,000 rands cash while illegally tracking Kinnear and other underworld members. The two family members who are accused with Madak are his brother and mother. The three are facing charges for tax fraud and money laundering. The state claims that they stole more than 46 million rands from the South African Revenue Service through their family businesses. According to the indictment, Madak was the head of the family businesses. Madak's mother Ruweda is accused of being a manager in the overall scheme. Madak's brother Yassine was also involved in the scheme. He was allegedly Madak's bookkeeper for the businesses. The three of them face 711 charges, including racketeering, fraud, money laundering, violating tax, and also organized crime. The state had been closely watching Madak's criminal organization for over six years, gathering evidence and building a case against him. According to the state, the main objective of Madak's organization was to corrupt police officials. They would do anything to obtain inside information about ongoing investigations against the gang. They would bribe, intimidate, and even blackmail police officers to get what they wanted. And perhaps the most horrifying aspect of Madak's criminal organization was their willingness to commit murder. In the quiet morning of the 9th of July 2019, in Mulbostrand, a coastal town situated an hour away from the city of Cape Town. A black Mercedes-Benz sedan is captured by CCTV cameras driving past 32 Herald Ashwell Street. Inside this black Mercedes sedan are six men. As the black Mercedes-Benz drove past 32 Herald Ashwell Street, a Bongoline Godi, one of the men in the car, spotted a white man who was wearing spectacles and a cap. The name of the white man was Nicholas Hirship. He was the father of a police detective who used to work at the Hawks Organized Crime Prevention Unit in Cape Town. It was a typical Tuesday morning for 74-year-old Nicholas Hirship as he prepared to take his grandchild to school. He woke up early, made breakfast for himself and his grandchild, and then headed out to his Toyota Land Cruiser. As he was reversing his Toyota Land Cruiser out his driveway, Ria Jisant and Abongilene Godi, two of the individuals who were inside the Mercedes-Benz, got out of the car and began walking towards Nicholas Hirship's direction. As they were approaching, Abongilene Godi took out a 38 revolver, walked right up to the driver's side window of the Toyota Land Cruiser, and shot multiple times. He and Ria Jisant then got back into the Mercedes-Benz, and it sped off. Nicholas Hirship was shot two times in the head, and he died on the scene. On the 4th of April 2022, three years later, Abongilene Godi was arrested by the Hawks. He appeared at the Atlantis Magistrate Court on the 5th of April, the following day. During his appearance in court, police revealed that he was arrested for two murder cases, and also two attempted murder cases. It was also revealed that he is a convicted felon, and they found him detained at the Polsmoor Maximum Prison. He was serving 15 years for killing Richard Joseph, a tow truck driver in the city of Cape Town. The details of Richard's death were gruesome. 
He had been shot seven times while sitting in his parked tow truck, a senseless act of violence that left his family and friends devastated. The police further revealed that Abongili had acted on instructions from Nafiz Madak and Ziyipul. As the court proceedings continued, it became clear that Abongili was not acting alone in his crimes. He was part of a larger criminal network, and the police were determined to bring down all those involved. In a shocking turn of events, Abongili was offered a plea deal by the police. They promised to reduce the seriousness of his charges if he provided information about the cases he was arrested for and his accomplices. The Bangling Godi knew that he was facing multiple life sentences, and he took the plea deal as it was his only chance for a lighter sentence. In his plea deal, Abongling Godi admitted that he is a member of the terrible West Side Street Gang, a criminal organization known for selling drugs in Cape Town. He told the court that, the five other men who were with him in the black Mercedes Benz during the murder of Nicholas Hirship were also members of the terrible West Side Gang. According to him, the group met together on the 8th of July 2019, the day before Nicholas Hirship was shot. During their meeting, they were ordered to assassinate a Hawks detective, who stays at 32 Harold Ashwell Street, in Melkbo Strand. The Pongulin Godi was appointed as the main shooter, with Reagent as his backup shooter. The black Mercedes Benz used in the murder was provided by Ziyipul. They were promised a 60,000 rands reward for the Sid. However, they were only paid 25,000 rands because they killed the wrong guy. In his plea deal, Abongilin Godi confessed that their intended target was Nico Hership, who is a former detective for the Hawk's serious commercial crime investigation team in Cape Town. However, they ended up shooting and killing his father, Nicholas Hership, instead, in a case of mistaken identity. A few days after the murder of Nicholas Hirship, it's alleged that Abongilin Godi met Nafiz Madak in Kuls River, a town situated 25 kilometers east of Cape Town. During this meeting, Madak told Ngodi that he did a good job in Melkbo Strand, and that he should not worry about any legal fees in future, because he had that covered. In June 2022, two months after his arrest, Abongilin Godi was charged in the Kalitsha Priority Crimes Court. For not wasting the court's time by not going to trial, and taking a plea deal, he was sentenced to 25 years for first-degree murder, 5 years for conspiracy to commit murder, and 10 years for the unlicensed gun and ammunition charges.